Greetings, lovely humans. It is the new year, and as such, January sales abound. However, with far too many of us buying more stuff than we need and more clothes than we can wear, I highly encourage you to skip the January sales this year and instead look at other ways of revivifying your wardrobe. Now, sewing new clothing items or altering or repurposing existing clothing items are all options. But if that isn't in your skill set or you just don't have the desire or time for it, then buying secondhand from charity shops or thrift stores in your areas is a great move. But if you're not accustomed to it, it can be tough to know where to start when you just walk into a secondhand shop. And it wasn't until a friend asked me a few years ago how I always managed to find such amazing clothes in charity shops that I realized how overwhelming it can really be if you're not already a seasoned pro. So I thought I'd share with you how I do it, give you some principles of in-person secondhand shopping just to make your life a bit easier. So here we go. Number one, do not look at everything. Don't do it. You are not going to that shop with the goal of touching, picking up and assessing every single item on every hanger. That is too big a job and too time consuming, even in UK sized charity shops. So the first thing when walking into a secondhand shop is to take a sweeping look over the entirety of the merchandise on offer. See if anything grabs your eye or stands out to you and prioritize looking at those items first. Number two, have a hunting brief. Are there specific items you're looking to add to your wardrobe or gaps in your wardrobe that you're looking to fill? Are there types of garments that you know work well for you or things you already own that you wear a lot that you would like more of? Are there any specific limitations or criteria that the clothing you own needs to conform to? Are there specific colors you wear? For me, for example, the colors I wear are black, gray, green, and pink, so I prioritize looking at clothing that is already that color. And if I find something in another color that I think is interesting, the very first thing I will do is check the label to see what fiber or fabric it's made of, because if I can't dye it a color that I am going to wear, there is no point in me buying it. I also don't want to keep two wardrobes, one for life and one for filming, so I need to think about what the clothes that I own will look like on camera. And because of that, I don't consider buying anything that has a very small, closely set together pattern or really minute stripes because they'll go all funky on screen. Also, I pretty much live in turtleneck tops these days, so if I find one in a colour and or pattern I know I'd wear, I'm probably going to buy it. And I know that certain fibers just do not work for me or my body. So I'll only buy things in breathable, natural fibers, or in very specific cases where I think something is in every other way absolutely perfect for me. I'll consider buying things that do have artificial fibers like polyester, nylon, and acrylic, as long as they account for less than 50% of the fiber makeup. Speaking of fibers, number three, look for quality. Taking some time or doing a bit of research to learn what good quality fabric feels like and what good quality clothing construction looks like will really help with this. But if you're not confident with that, you can just keep an eye out for companies or brands that you know make their clothes really well as a bit of a shortcut. But generally speaking, things you want to avoid are fabrics that feel scratchy, papery or rubbery, fabrics that are sheer or see-through when they're not meant to be sheer or see-through, clothing that has a lot of loose threads or obviously sloppy or uneven stitching, and fast fashion brands that you know make their clothing to be basically disposable or very short use because they don't make their clothing to last and would require you doing a ridiculous amount of regular repair jobs on them for you to get a decent amount of wear out of them. Number four, ignore imaginary scenarios. And this is one I sometimes forget. But there is no point in me buying clothing for a life that is not like mine. I might stumble across a stunning, beautiful, floor-length party dress that I absolutely love. But one, I already have beautiful party dresses in my wardrobe at home. And two, I'm quite introverted and don't go to parties very often. So it's not a particularly good use of my money. That's also why there's not much point in me buying high heels with heels above a certain height, or suit jackets, or mini skirts, or tiny day-to-day -day handbags that don't have enough space to fit a book in them. Because as amazing and wonderful as they may be, I will not use them. 
I should save my pennies for things I will actually use. Number five, beware of repeats. So the issue with looking at what catches your eye is that sometimes what catches your eye is what you like the most. And if you aren't careful about keeping in mind what you already have in your closet at home, you can end up buying essentially a carbon copy of something you already own. Having said that, if you have items of clothing that you wear all the time, that are your go-to garments, that you know work for you and that you will wear, buying another similar item can kind of spread your wares between them and actually help your clothes last longer overall. So this one isn't so much a don't do it, it's more of a be careful out there type thing. Number six, clothes should be comfortable. And I mean comfortable not only in the physical sense, but also mentally and emotionally as well. Do yourself a favour and buy clothing that fits the body that you live in right now. And clothing that has enough ease in it for you to move how your body moves and that will allow you to do all the things you need your body to do. Sitting, crouching, standing, bending, flying high kicks, cartwheels, I don't know what you do in your spare time. Keep in mind that the size labels on clothing mean nothing and give you no useful information, especially on older clothing and vintage clothing where the sizes tend to fit smaller than they generally do now. So consider bringing a tape measure with you so that you can quickly check whether something is likely to fit your body or not without needing to haul it all the way to a changing room to try it on. Secondhand shops can be amazing places to pick up clothing that's more gender affirming because while clothing is often still divided into gendered categories, there being a range of styles from a range of times means there's usually more variation in the look and cut of clothes and I usually find that staff and other shoppers pay far less attention to what I'm actually buying than tends to be the case in standard clothing retailers. However, in secondhand shops, there tend to be far fewer items available in larger sizes in women's clothing, as well as fewer items available in smaller sizes in men's clothing. So for any of my trans and non-binary babes looking for a new to them outfit, please keep that in mind, because it can be very frustrating. Basically, if you're uncomfortable with how your body looks or feels in a garment, even if you're just a tiny bit iffy about it, don't buy it. Which brings me to my next point, number seven, good enough might not be good enough. If you're looking at a piece of clothing and trying to persuade yourself that it's a good idea to buy it, it might not be a good idea to buy it. The ideal is for everyone to have clothes that they feel good about and they feel good about themselves in, right? So if you're umming and eyeing over something and going, well, it is in my size and it is a color I wear and it does fit me and it would go with that other thing I have and I could probably wear it to work and I guess I wouldn't mind wearing it day to day. You probably don't like it that much. My general rule is that unless I am genuinely enthusiastic about an item of clothing or I can think of a clear and necessary use for it in my life, it isn't worth buying it. So, mini recap of the principles while I show you some cute clothes I picked up in charity shops over the last little while. Number one, do not look at everything. Scan the shop and look at what stands out. Number two, have a hunting brief. It helps you prioritize what you spend time looking at. Number three, look for quality. You want to spend money on clothes that are going to last you. Number four, ignore imaginary scenarios. Be honest about what you'll actually have occasion to wear. Number five, beware of repeats. Don't buy copies of things you already have unless you're gonna use them. Number six, clothes should be comfortable. They just should. I don't feel like I need to explain that one. You live in them. Be nice to yourself and get comfy clothes. Number seven, good enough might not be good enough. It needs to be something you really love or be really useful. So I hope you enjoyed this little charity shop, thrift shop, buying strategy explainer. If you want to get into or more into buying secondhand clothes, but it's something you find intimidating or overwhelming or stressful, I got excited and made a flowchart you can go through just to try and make deciding whether to buy a secondhand find that little bit easier. It's a free PDF download. You can find it in the description along with a little infographic of the points that I covered in this video and a secondhand hunting brief that you can fill out and use if you would like. If you want to keep sticking around, that would be really cool, but whether you decide to keep hanging out or not, I hope everything's okay 
in your world. I hope your new year's off to an all right start and I will see you all next a time. I'm thirsty. I'm going to finish my coffee. That's what I'm going to do. Please not stop recording. However many minutes of me just drinking coffee. I could project that all over the inside of a room and make a installation piece. I'm in an odd mood today. I don't want to be an installation filmmaker. Oh, oh, my hip. Oh no. Oh, I don't like that. Oh no, 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 no. No. One. Click. Click if you're going to click. No. Do it. Just. Oh, finally.